Just TV News. We're live on South Krause Avenue with an update on the business's closing. I'm kind of upset because this is my like go-to place for food. Plus new information that's crucial for international students. We'll tell you what they're being required to pay. Nearly 70 degrees outside today, but let's not forget that it is still winter. I'll tell you what weather to expect over the next few days in my full forecast. Your campus news leader, Citrus TV, starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Good evening, I'm Johnny Oliver. And I'm Jamie Weiss. Six Syracuse University experts from different schools gathered today at Dineen Hall to discuss President Donald Trump's immigration ban. About 70 people attended the discussion, joined by professors from Newhouse, Maxwell, and College of Law to hear from different perspectives on Trump's immigration policies. The panel's host, Sean Mills, says a lot of students are concerned about the impact of the travel ban. Mills hopes that the event can help them better understand what the potential effects are. I think there's a lot of confusion about it. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the concerns were coming from, was people didn't know what the impact was going to be or what it was. Um, there's a lot of different perspectives on what the impact would be from various media sources and even from different scholars and professors even within our own institution. Part of the college experience is filing paperwork. Students are familiar with filling in forms and applications with information, but whether or not they earn money, international students are required to file tax returns. Citrus TV News reporter Leanza Reyes investigated why. After working to obtain visas, plane tickets, and legal documents, international students come to Syracuse having memorized all of their information. But the ride doesn't end there. Last week, international students received an email regarding the United States tax requirements. Whether or not they earn money within the country, these students are required to fill a form under the Internal Revenue Service declaring taxes. Students who haven't heard of this requirement were confused why they had to file even when they didn't earn any money. They don't tell us any details about why we have to pay it. They just say like, as an international student, you were required to pay the tax. Well, they talked about, you know, remaining in student status, you know, give an introduction to SU community as a whole. But then there was never any information about filing tax returns. And that was one reason why I was kind of slightly bothered by this. I was wondering if it was something that was new, but then turns out it wasn't so. Although it is difficult to understand why international students need to file these tax forms, these will hopefully benefit them in the future. Despite their confusion, international students have to file these forms, but for important reasons. According to the IRS website, the forms are meant to provide information to the government about what non-immigrants are doing in the United States. Leon Reyes, Citrus TV News. The Slusker Center could not offer a statement during this time. However, students can fill in the forms on SprintTax, an online system that the university is using for tax returns. Syracuse University has donated a record-breaking amount of money to United Way in their 45th annual fundraiser. $240,000 were presented to representatives at halftime during the men's basketball game against Duke. Greek Life students collected money at the gates before the game and contributed almost $5,000 to the total amount. The United Way president was also recognized at halftime. Money goes to 91 different programs and services in central New York. And Syracuse University is kicking off their annual Vera House White R Ribbons campaign on March 4th. Volunteers will sell white wristbands and chocolate at the entrance to the Carrier Dome before the men's basketball game against Georgia Tech. Donations are also accepted and all proceeds go to the Vera House to support education campaigns. Four years of research have paid off. Syracuse University English professor George Saunders' novel, Lincoln on the Bardo, is now number one on the New York Times bestseller list. It tells the story of President Lincoln guiding the country during the early days of the Civil War. He says he hopes the short story will help people see what greatness looks like in a leader. And last night was filled with music, food, and pajamas for those who attended Cozy Capella in Goldstein Auditorium. Performances were held by six of SU's a cappella groups, including Groove Stand, Main Squeeze, The Mandarins, Orange Appeal, Autotunes, and Oi Capella. Group members and audience members alike came to the event wearing their pajamas, and each group performed two songs of various genres, including different soloists. I think all the support that all the acapella groups have for each other is something really special here at Syracuse and it really makes um, all of our events really special. 
Well, Jamie, we had beautiful weather this week, and I certainly enjoyed the record-breaking temperatures we had. I seriously was too, Johnny. And our Citrus TV weather anchor, David Edelstein, is here to tell us how much longer this unseasonably warm weather will last. David? Yeah, it is definitely warm outside. Right now, 66 degrees after a very warm February day. Uh, clouds are going to be moving in around now, though. The sun that we've had the past few days could start to go behind some layers of clouds. Let's take a look now at our current temperatures in the area. 66 degrees in Syracuse, really around there across the board. As you go north a little bit below into the low 60s, Elmira right here in the high 60s still, but Rochester, they were experiencing some colder temperatures today, 59 degrees at the current moment. Let's take a look here. Today is the warmest February 24th in history. We have a new record in 2017 at 68 degrees is the high. Some places like the Syracuse University weather stem are reporting up to 74 degrees today. We'll wait to see what the official weather is uh, in the future. But 68 degrees, we'll say for now, is the record. 1906, the last highest was 65. Last year, 49 degrees, and it's funny because in 2015, just two years ago now, we had the lowest temperatures ever on February 24th at negative 18. That is a dash in front of the 18. And now let's take a look at this radar quickly, and we'll talk more about this coming up. But you see all these storms moving past, and I'll tell you what this means for our upcoming weather later in this broadcast. Thank you, David. And coming up, another executive order today from President Trump. We'll tell you what this changes. Plus, the investigation into, into the death of Kim Jong-nam continues what new discovery was made when we come back. Hard. What's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you get stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Welcome back to Citrus TV News. Our reporter Zachary Levine is live on South Cross Avenue. That's right. Now, Zachary, with plans for this brand new construction starting soon, what student hotspots are still open in that alleyway? Well, here at 727 South Cross Avenue, hair trends, Komachi and Chucks are still open. However, appetizing, uh, excuse me, appetizing, roly poly and Funkin' Waffles are now closed. We recently reached out to Boulevard Ed Equities, who purchased the property. No date is yet set for construction start. There will be an eight-story apartment building built here. First floor will be retail, rest luxury apartments, according to the Daily Orange. Boulevard Equities recently built an apartment building at 404 University Avenue, right here on the hill. The project for this location was approved in early February. On some of those closed businesses, we found notes saying that a company will be here to remove asbestos from the site. 
We saw students walking up to appetizing today only to discover they are now closed. Students, let's just say, are disappointed. Well, there's only a couple places left open. Uh, Tomachi, which is our next door Korean place, and uh, Chuck's. They will be closing, both of them will be closing on March 4th. That'll be their last day. I extended my time here till 13th according to my lease. Even though like I don't come here often, it's definitely like an integral part of Syracuse. Like there's a lot of memories that's been made, so it's kind of it's very sad. <laughs> I'm kind of upset cuz this is my like go-to place for food. Now, we did reach out to Chuck's, and they said they'll be open early for the game on March 4th. One last note, Hair Trends here at the end of the block will be closing on March 13th. Reporting live from South Cross Avenue, Zachary Levine, Citrus TV News. Well, thank you so much, Zachary. We will continue to keep you updated on this story as it unfolds. And you can follow at Citrus TV News on Twitter for updates. And switching to national news now, President Trump signed an executive action today. This will establish a task force to determine if certain federal regulations can be changed or dropped. The order establishes that regulations will be judged based on their impacts on the safety and quality of life for Americans. The president has promised this reform move will have a positive impact on jobs and American business. A judge is allowing only one accuser to testify at Bill Cosby's sexual assault trial. The ruling means that, the, that prosecutors cannot let the other 12 women testify against Cosby. The witness who can testify claims she was assaulted by the comedian in 1996 in Los Angeles. Cosby's trial is set to take place in June over a 2005 complaint by a former Temple University employee. Cosby remains on $1 million bail and has pleaded not guilty. An update on the death of Kim Jong-nam. A chemical warfare agent poisoned the half-brother of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The toxin is called Agent VX and is outlawed under current international treaties. It is a tasteless, odorous, and causes uncontrollable muscle contractions. South Korean intelligence officials believe North Korea are behind the attack. Two attacks near a Syrian town killed at least 60 people this morning. Turkish forces just captured the town and are retreating from one of their last remaining strongholds in northern Syria. A suicide car bomb went off outside of a security office. Footage shows a destroyed town that is badly damaged from the fighting, and the UN envoy for Syria is on its second day of meetings to try to reach a political solution. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Well, here we are again looking at this radar. It's really zoomed out. Take a look at the entire state of New York. We see a lot of colors flashing about red, green, yellow, and some blue. What that is is a lot of rain and actually two storms that we'll be experiencing this weekend following our nice weather today and a lot of sun that we had the past few days. Take a look a little bit closer. First, though, notice how this entire storm is a big stream. It will go straight across the state, followed up by the blue that we see over here. That we'll mention more on in a second. Taking a closer look, though, we're really going to be fine in Syracuse until tomorrow, maybe even in the afternoon. Clouds are going to be moving in the rest of tonight. That's what you got to be looking out for. There will be some heavy thunderstorms. Be careful if you're walking outside. It won't be as pleasurable walking outside as it was today. Now, this graph right here, this radar, is showing snow as it is accumulated in certain areas. Much of Syracuse's snow has melted. A lot of these western areas, the snow is gone. Up north, of course, and more to the east, that snow is still there, but still, it is disappearing. As you can tell, the colors are shrinking away, and you're seeing more of that green ground. We got to be careful tomorrow with our thunderstorms because a lot of that snow will turn into water that is going to be going into a downstream and going all over the roads, so be careful while driving and all of that. Now, taking a look at tomorrow, 61 degrees. It is still warm out, but the temperatures are going to be dropping. Now we're going to look. When you wake up, 59 degrees. Again, it will be warm throughout the day, the high 61. Temperatures are dropping because of the fact that on Sunday, we will have some snowstorms. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., though, and to noon, still 60 degrees. At four, uh, 6 p.m., 44 degrees. Now, the five-day forecast will reveal everything. It tells the entire story. The thunderstorms tomorrow, but then it significantly drops. Sunday, 37 degrees. Morning snow, but then the sun comes back out again. Tuesday, there is some afternoon rain, and that will carry over into Wednesday. It really is going to stay warm out compared to the snow that we have, and uh, then it's going to stay raining with those warm temperatures instead. 
Thanks, David. Up next, the flu affected hundreds on campus this year and we're not out of the woods yet. We'll tell you what Health Services is saying when we come back. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. You're watching Citrus TV News with Johnny Oliver, Jamie Weiss, and David Edelstein with weather. Citrus TV News continues now. For the first time during the flu season, the state health department reports the numbers of weekly flu cases have decreased. Doctors say it is still too early to see if we are past the peak of flu season, but are hoping the numbers will continue to decline. And while flu season may be coming to an end, Citrus TV reporter Taylor Lane talked to SU Health Services about what's left of the flu on campus. The CDC has announced that the flu shot has been catching over 50% of all flu cases during the season. This doesn't match up with the SU campus. Health Services sent out an email to all students warning them about the large number of flu cases on campus earlier this month. Over 300 people were positive. Now we've tested more than that because some of them came out negative, but I think last year it was around 126. So it's way more than last year. Students cannot go back to their classes after testing positive for the flu. Those who catch it early on only have to miss two days, while those who don't can miss over four days of classes. This means that students are missing lots of schoolwork because they are sick. Some of them are so diligent, they just, even though they're that sick, they don't want to miss class. Um, but I think the ones that are really, really sick, just it's like not that important to them. They just want to get better. But there are some people that have gone to class through it all. While flu season is almost over, Health Services says you still may need one of these. Because it is so contagious, the flu is still going around the university. I'm Taylor Lang, Citrus TV News. If someone, you come to, if someone around you comes down with the flu, doctors say that the best way to keep yourself healthy is to wash your hands and all the services you share. And coming up in sports, it was senior night for the Syracuse women's basketball team on Thursday. We'll tell you if the Orange could send them out on top and the football world lost a legend. We'll have more as Citrus TV Sports rolls on after the break. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Every time I hear the alarm bell go off in school, I think it's an air raid. A lot of houses in our neighborhood have been destroyed. I like to close my ears and sing songs whenever the bombs come close. I'm worried our new neighbors won't like us. But I know it's all going to be worth it. I just want my family to be safe. But these are not my these words. These are not my words. These are not my words. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. 
And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. After Syracuse men's basketball stunned number 10 Duke at the buzzer on Wednesday night, I'm sure SU fans were yearning for more basketball on the hill, and they got their wish on Thursday night. Coach Q and the women's team were home last night taking on ACC foe Wake Forest. The Orange came into the game having won five of their last seven contests, and this one was a big one at the Dome. It was senior night, and the Orange obviously led by their senior backcourt duo, and early on, it was that backcourt that got things started. Alexis Peterson, she hits the three, and Syracuse goes up 5-3 early on. And then it's Brianna Day a couple minutes later, a monster on the board, and she gets the put back to go. And then Brittany Sykes in the second quarter now, the steal, and she finds her girl, Alexis Peterson, with the layup. Syracuse goes up by 10, 33-23 in the second. We're going to jump to the third because Syracuse ran away. It's the fountain of youth, Gabby Cooper, the freshman. She knocks down the trifecta. Syracuse goes up by 16, and then it's Alexis Peterson doing what she does. She gets the steal and lays it up. Syracuse up 54-33 in the third quarter, and we're going to jump to the fourth. Syracuse just dominated the Deacons all night long. It's Gabby Cooper again. She knocks down the three, and Syracuse takes this one on senior night. 85-64, Syracuse led by scoring by three of the seniors. We're going to hear from one of them right now, Alexis Peterson. Um, it's been a great journey. You know, it's been great being here. We've watched this um, this dome go from maybe 150 fans and 70 of those being staff members to 11,000. You know, so it's, I mean, it's just something that, you know, I've been a part of history here and it's just it's something to celebrate that, you know, this is something I'll always remember forever and be able to tell my kids, you know, 20 years that, you know, uh, I was a part of probably one of the greatest Syracuse teams in my four years. As the basketball season is winding down, the lacrosse season is beginning to heat up. John Desco and SU Men's Lacrosse take the Carrier Dome turf on Saturday for the first time since their thrilling final second victory over number 12 Albany last weekend. Syracuse plays host to Army West Point. The matchup features two of the top five most winningest programs in Division I lacks. The Orange and the Black Knights are set to face off for the 64th time with the Black Knights controlling the all-time series 39 to 24 and earlier this week midfielder Sergio Salcedo talked about how the how about the uh, talked about how the Albany game is a stepping stone for the Orange heading into this matchup. Um, you know, I think it it helps our confidence as a team a little bit, but um, you know, we we expect to beat everyone, you know. We're not kind of coming into games thinking I hope we we can squeak one out today. I think, you know, we have a little bit of a confidence or swagger about us that's uh that's, that's telling us, you know, you're going to beat the teams you're going to play. Make these guys beat us. Um, so I think it helped a little bit, but we learned a lot from it as a team, I think. This is the third of four straight home games for the Orange to begin their 2017 campaign. They are looking to move to 3-0. and oh. And the football world lost a pioneer. From former Syracuse football star quarterback Bernie Custis passed away Thursday. Custis, widely considered to be the first black quarterback in modern professional football. He was selected by the Cleveland Browns in the 1951 National Football League draft, but he chose to play for the Canadian football team, the Hamilton Tiger Cats, so he could continue to play. Quarterback Custis was 88. And from a legend on the gridiron to a legendary team. Baseball is back in the Big Apple. Earlier today, the Yankees kicked off the 2017 campaign with their first spring training game. The pinstripes dominated Philly 9-4 with three homers. Also in action were the Yanks' crosstown rivals, the Mets. Terry Collins and co. also started off with a bang. They took down the Red Sox 3-2. It's a beautiful thing, baseball being back. And finally, we end on the hardwood as the Nets take the court for the first time since the All-Star break tonight. Brooklyn travels to Denver to take on the Nuggets. It is the first contest of an eight-game road trip for the Nets. They will be playing without starter Bohan Bogdanovich, who was traded to the Wizards before the deadline on Thursday. Now that deadline passed yesterday, 
not much else going on, guys. No, no big trades. Obviously, the big trade came on Sunday night. Yep, the Knicks and the Nets were fairly quiet at the deadline, but switching back to Syracuse, the men's basketball team plays on Sunday against Louisville. What can we expect from the men that game? You know, when after you beat Duke, you know, this is not as much of a must-win game for the Orange as it was if they had lost to the Blue Devils, but Orange... They're hot right now, trying to get another road win. This would be huge for them. I, if they win this, I think that solidifies their tournament spot. So they're going to come out aggressive, hungry. You know, you're probably expecting how they played the last couple weeks. Probably going to go down early, make a comeback, and we'll see if we can pull it out. They lost to Louisville just last week, so we'll see if they can pull out this one against the Cardinals. Be a big one. Yeah, it well, Matt, let's focus on one. the women now. So the women are doing great. What seed are you predicting for the tournament? Uh, I think, you know, ACC tournament, they're going to get a top four seed. Um, you'd have to anticipate. They're number 21 in the country. Now. They've had some big wins in the ACC this year. So you're anticipating that. But the big thing is that this team, led by their senior backcourt, as I mentioned before, these, these backcourt, Alexis Peterson, Brittany Sykes, they're looking to go out with a bang. And you could see them, hopefully in the tournament, make a run like they did last year to the championship game against UConn. This is a very talented team. They haven't, haven't put all the pieces together this year, but they're starting to figure it out towards the end of the season, so hopefully they get it going some more. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Matt. No problem. When we come back, we'll have one last look at your weather. Stay with us. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Well, David, let's talk about the weather and let's find out what Let's talk about this morning. There was crazy thunder this morning that woke us all up. What was going on with that? Well, so as the weather is changing, we're having a lot of colder temperatures that we just had about last week. And all of a sudden, we get these high temperatures. We're breaking records today, almost 70 degrees, and some saying it was 70. As you have those temperatures colliding, uh, all of a sudden, you get a lot of static in the air. And with clouds moving in, that's where lightning comes from. The static will shock down to the earth, and uh, so you get some big thunder on the way. Well, David, you mentioned in your forecast that we might see some snow on Sunday. It's been pretty warm lately. Will we see that snow stick to the ground? Honestly, probably not. Where we've seen in the past few weeks the snow really stick up and pile up, uh, we're probably not going to see that snow. As I said before, it's melting away. The temperatures are only really going to be cold on Sunday when it is snowing. Otherwise, it would be rain. And then we're just going to go right back up into the high 40s, even into the 50s, and maybe the 60s again. So it will just melt, and we're not going to be seeing it for long. So you think this upcoming snowstorm is just a little blip, and we're, for the most part, done with winter? Fingers crossed. It is still winter, you know, until the end of March. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but f as for recent predictions, uh, it will still be warm out. We're going to experience some more rain, probably staying at, at lowest the 40s. Right. Now, this is looking a little into the future, but in the coming months, are you expecting us to keep on warming up and trending up, or are you really going to see a colder spring? Definitely, it's going to keep warming up. We're on our way to spring. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. Coming up tonight on the Orange Television Network, Hughes Countdown previews the Orange basketball team. And after that at 7 p.m. is Syracuse Unpeeled. And at 7.30, Q's Countdown again. All this on Channel 14.1. And that's all for Citrus TV News this evening. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com and follow us on all of our social media. I'm Johnny Oliver. And I'm Jamie Weiss. Have a great weekend, Syracuse.